Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Jenny Live. This is a special Jenny Live, I gotta tell you, because it is Thursday, we never do a live show on Thursdays, and we are in the Miami TV cruise right now with a very, very special guest. A lot of you have always been wondering if, you know, we speak a lot about energy, about spiritualism, about life after death, maybe? But Amir Serrano, he's an author of five books already, and is the expert of experts in these topics. So for all of you that have always had questions, this is the time to ask them if you guys have Twitter or in MiamiTVLife.com. There's a chat there. You can uh, go ahead and type the questions in the chat. And we'll be live for who knows how long, depending how the conversation goes. That's the beauty about being live in Miami TV, that we don't have times pretty much. So join us, and I hope you enjoy the show. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Bienvenidos a todos. Estamos en vivo en directo aquí en Miami, en, en el calor de Miami, tengo que decir, porque estamos encima del crucero de Miami TV. Como pueden ver detrás mío, las bellas aguas de Miami, calorcito. Dicen que estamos en invierno, pero no está en invierno. ¿eh? Ya volvió el calor nuevamente, así que podemos... Podemos estar vestidos de verano. Bueno, para muchos de ustedes siempre han estado eh, curiosos en el hecho de la vida después de la muerte, las energías, el espiritualismo. Y han tenido un montón de preguntas sobre esto, pero yo por supuesto que se las voy a responder con opiniones. Y siempre les he dicho, vamos a tener un experto de esto, que lo tenemos aquí con nosotros, un, un, una persona muy especial, Admir Serrano, que no solamente ha escrito cinco libros, sino también se dedica a esto, a dar lecturas a todas las personas aquí en la Florida y por todo el mundo. Así que bienvenidos a Jenny Live. Y no se olviden de que estamos en vivo, pueden preguntar sus preguntas en miamitvlife.com en la parte de vivo. ¿Cómo estás? Excelente. Uh, bueno, ¿qué gracias. tal? A ver, escritor, lecturer, it's going to be Spanglish, by the way. Vamos a estar en, Sp en Spanglish hoy. Well, um, that's uh, something that I use my time for, you know, researching and studying and uh, uh, ended up uh, uh, wanting to share what I learned. So, and then I put in books and also I share in lectures and so forth and also answering questions through my website and, and all that. Bueno, la gente hoy en día, people nowadays are, are being more uh, intrigued about this subject. La gente hoy en día quiere saber cada vez más y más. ¿De dónde eres? Yo soy de Brasil. ¿De, ¿De qué parte de Brasil? De São Paulo, pero São Paulo. Vivo, vivo en Estados Unidos hace mucho tiempo. ¿Ya estás americanizado? Sí, sí, creo que sí. <risa> bueno, mándale una, un saludo a la gente de São Paulo. Ah, sí. Uh, uh, Buenas tardes a todos ustedes, es un placer estar aquí. Y vamos entonces a hacer nuestra parte eh, compartiendo con ustedes lo que los mis estudios, las mis experiencias paranormales para que nos podamos entonces entender un poquito quem realmente nós somos, por que estamos aqui na Terra, onde vamos depois. Okay. Why are we here? I wonder why we're here. That's, that's, that's something that everybody wonders at one point in their life. Why are we here? What are we doing in Earth, you know? All right, so uh, why did you start studying this? Uh, por que empezaste a estudiar todo esto? Um, é, é, é muy interesante. É, é, no creo que mucha gente é, haga lo que yo hice. Okay. Yo empecé estudiando eso para prepararme para mi propio, propia muerte física. O sea, ¿tú querías morir? No. <risa> no. O sea, muerte no física. Quería saber cómo era. Okay. <risa> ¿Y cómo ah, volvías? Antes del hecho. Okay. <risa> antes de que ocurriera. ¿Tenías miedo a morir antes? No, no. Es que no. yo quería entender cómo era el proceso. Muchos se escuchaba hablar okay. qué es que pasa con la persona cuando se está por morir. Entonces yo empecé a estudiar para estar en paz. Okay. Eh, and, uh, es lo importante, ¿no? Claro. Estar en paz antes de irse de sí, aquí. Sí, y eso fue después de leer eh, el filósofo Platón. Okay. Que, que, what language are we going to talk? Lo que quieras, yo traduzco después, no te preocupes. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll translate you guys, don't worry. <laughs> so, I was reading Plato. Okay. And Phaedo, is a, it's a story of, of uh, Socrates when he's, he's condemned to death. And then he's waiting execution. And he's already, you know, an old man. He's one of the wisest men in the world at that time, you know, for 500 BC and so forth. And uh, he was in jail, and he was uh, going to drink uh, uh, hemlock. It's a poison okay. because that was the penalty that he they gave him. And all his friends, they're talking to him and trying, Socrates, we can get you out of here, and then you go continue living and being the great person that you are, a great philosopher. So why do I want to go? He said, no, because I'm Athen, you know, Athenian, and they had uh, all the states were independent, and they had their own laws, their own autonomy, and things like that. So no. Los Atenos tenían que tomar veneno anteriormente si hacían algo mal para morirse. Los que eran condenados a la muerte, sí. 
Sí, diferente de aquí tiene la, la lito injection. Es la misma cosa, pero aplicada. Hubo algo, ¿no? Sí, por medio, <risa> pero por ruta diferente. Una ahora por la vena, antes era por la boca. Toma en un. So before you used to drink it, nowadays you have the lethal yeah. injection, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's always been something for death, cheese. That's right, yeah. See, the, we, we, the only progress that we made in that sense was the way the venom or the poison is injected. So, yeah. so basically. Well, Well, it's probably faster now that it's injected, right? Well, not the last guy that they did. They didn't mix it correctly, so the guy suffered a lot, and there's a oh lot of God. controversy. But anyways, back to Socrates. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> not, not, we're not talking about those dead people today. <laughs> no, no, let's go back in time, 500 B.C. So uh, uh, Socrates was very at peace, and his friends were saying, you know, we'll go and we'll save our life. But why, you know, because you're going to die. He said, no, no, I'm not going to die. My body's going to die, not right. me. The, and because I'm not the body. I'm The guy who's talking to you is listening to you. This is Socrates. This is me, my spirit. The body is just an instrument I'm using. When it dies, then I'll continue. And then, the, and then he was very peaceful. I thought, you know, I was admiring that peacefulness. And then one of them, they asked him, Socrates, how do you want us to dispose of you after you die? Right. And he said, any way you want, if you can catch me. Because <laughs> it's not him anymore, right? It's not him. He said, when, when the body dies, I'm going to be out of here. You're not, yeah. I'm not going to even look you know, behind, look back. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I thought it was beautiful. So I thought, how, how do I uh, train myself okay. to be in this state of peacefulness when my, my time comes? And that's how it started. Yo creo que mucha gente le tiene eh, miedo ¿no? A, al fallecer. En este caso, él leyó un libro y de Aristóteles cuando cuando estaba eh, por morir y que él estaba muy en paz y le dijeron, bueno, ¿por qué estás, estás, en, estás tan en paz y vas a morir? ¿Qué quieres que hagamos con tu cuerpo después? Y dice, no importa porque no me van a poder alcanzar. En el caso de que él ya entendía de que uno no muere en realidad, uno sigue de largo. Ahora, ¿no has intentado nada, no? Como para irte del cuerpo o sí? Um, well, bueno, serían experiencias fuera del cuerpo, no, no fallecer. Like, you haven't had an a, a, a almost death experience, have you? No. No, I have been very close to death, and but I was very young. I don't remember, but uh, uh, according to the doctors, uh, they they even had told my parents to prepare my funeral. Oh. But I'm so stubborn that I didn't uh, want to. I had more thing. I had to be here. Right, so you had I, to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to be here today. I couldn't die at that time. Right. You know that does make sense. I have an interview at Miami TV. Right. Again. <laughs> very important. <laughs> <laughs> and I made it all the way through here. So, do you think that, um, do you remember when this happened or no? No, no, no. no. Okay. I don't remember that. But I, I was never scared of death. Uh, but I just wanted that time be that, that peacefulness. The experience that I have conscious, consciously, we all have this uh, experience, is the, uh, we will call out-of-body experiences. It's the experience that we have of leaving the physical body, and we, right. that happens to us mostly every night. Near-death experience is a way, it is an out-of-body experience, but the cause is different from when you we are healthy. Death is an out-of-body experience too, but it's one that we go and we don't come no, back. You know, yeah. <laughs> you cut that line, you know, you're gone. You got the silver cord. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> we cut the silver cord. And then we, we keep going, living our natural life, because we are spirits, and we are living a physical life. So we have this physical instrument that we use to manifest Uh, here on earth and that's why we're here to learn and stuff but our essence what we are is a spirit a energy great you know amount of energy we're, we're majestic beings so but we're just living in a different uh, it's a different mode of living here physically but when the body uh, when we finish our work here and the body dies we continue living our natural life that we've been living for millennia 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 Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people that um, you've talked to that have had, you know, uh, almost near-death experiences. Uh, there's stories about maybe you even communicating or connecting with loved ones. Like, they even show it in movies, you know. And I always say what you see in a movie has its research. There's a reason why it's there and they're showing you it. Um, have you had any stories like that? And I'm sure you believe in this too. Yeah, of course. Um, as, as part of my uh, preparation for my, my own death. <laughs> His death is going to be the happiest death of all. I already I'll see it. I want to be yeah, Miami Live to be there. I'm going to get one of those like uh, infrared cameras and see if we can catch your spirit and your, your wave back at us. Yeah, yeah. So part of that training, I went, I volunteered in hospice. Okay. And, and hospice is uh, like a medical organization, uh, like most like a medical philosophy that people go, people who are um, 
diagnosed with a terminal disease. So they can't, you know, it can't be fixed anymore. The body is, is going to shut down. They're going to leave the physical body. Uh, so they're going to die. So I spent time with them and a lot of time, about two years working as a volunteer. And uh, so first was to understand what they go, the emotions and so forth. But it must I, have been tough. Well, it, it's a beautiful learning experience. You know, it's a, you see a lot of suffering and stuff, but I know, right? it, it, well, you're seeing people dying. And I'm like, <laughs> but they're not dying. See, that's the thing. Unless We're you just, help them through it. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, most you know, at the end, they're not afraid. Some are afraid. So it, and that's a part of uh, a natural part of life. But when you understand that it's only the body that dies, not us, then everything becomes easier. Now, the experience that you're talking about uh, with the loved ones present who who died. Um, they're called um, deathbed visions that we call. Okay. Yeah. And and what's amazing, what's beautiful, because we are the a huge spiritual family, right? Yeah. And uh, we are here, you know, with uh, now with the loved ones that we've known for many, many, uh, many, many centuries in other lives, and uh, and we love them. So we built this tie of love with them. Now our our parents and grandparents, they're also part of this great spiritual family that we have. And when they pass away, they don't cease loving us. They don't stop loving us right. or caring. They continue, and they continue also working, helping us. So when people are uh, about to die, many of those, the loved ones that are very close, they come back and to guide us. It's like a, it's like when we're born in physical life, yeah. right? You go to the hospital, your, your, our mother is about to, to give birth, and we are surrounded by doctors who are specialized in that uh, trade, and also loved ones, you know, the parents, the, 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 no, the one, just one of the parents, right? <laughs> the, the other one is there already, yeah. the mother anyway. And you know, it can be some loved one or whatever. So we're there to welcome that being, that spirit, who is coming back to earth. So when we, the death is a birth in reverse. It's leaving the physical life and being uh, born to the spiritual life. Okay. You know, we, we also, people were also sad when we left this, the spiritual life to be born here. Our loved ones that we had, yeah. But we don't remember, right? We don't remember that. Some, some, some people children do. children remember, yeah, mm -hmm. their, their children. We, 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 maybe we remembered when we were little, but now we forgot, thank God. <laughs> and uh, I know, right? Imagine living your life that way. Yeah, I know. Because, you know, there's a lot of things that we shouldn't remember anyways. So, and then when we return to physical, to, to the spirit life, we make people here sad, but we make uh, the other ones happy who are all coming us back, right. you know? But the, we, uh, when we pass away, uh, pass out, we pass away, we're not here anymore. And then we see our loved ones. We see them. We can try to communicate as many, many uh, uh, spirits do. But as here, we don't sense that person most of the time. Some people do. But so people here still in physical life, the one that we leave behind, they're sad because they can't see us. Right. So they think that we disappeared for... They're attached to our matter, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't see... Well, the only thing that happens when someone we love uh, dies or leave a physical life is that we, they're not in our presence. We can't see their physical body, but they're still around. And you can them. actually s even communicate with them. Definitely. Mo mostly, uh, most common uh, in dreams, what we call dreams, right, at night. Um, especially, uh, and there are many, it's very, very common, the dreams that uh, the person say, says, you know, I, um, I was... Uh, I dreamed that I, I saw my yeah. son and I embraced and they can tell you know the emotions he was so beautiful I could even feel feel his warmth his perfume mm -hmm. and all that so that is an out of body experience and spirits use a lot of it before you continue bueno estamos hablando un poquito de que él dice de que cuando nosotros nacemos aquí en el cuerpo físico eh, tenemos a todos los doctores a toda nuestra familia esperándonos no por supuesto eh, y halagándonos a que estamos viniendo a este a este mundo pero dice que cuando uno fallece es lo mismo en realidad nosotros estamos dejando el mundo espiritual y viniendo a esta tierra por lo tanto tenemos a muchos parientes quizás que ya se han ido también que cuando fallecemos nos están esperando así tal cual él explica de que es como un nacimiento pero en el en, en la vida espiritual sería, ¿no? En un, en un mundo espiritual. Entonces que no hay que no hay que estar triste de que nunca vamos a estar solos, de que siempre tenemos eh, familia del otro lado, ¿me entienden? ¿No? Y que también siempre están con nosotros, que se pueden comunicar a través de sueños. Muchas personas sueñan de que hay en el sueño de ayer, mmm, justamente vi a mi hijo y lo abrazaba y dice de que hasta sienten esto. Y es justamente porque son, es la manera eh, más, eh, podríamos decirle, más fácil para ellos 
poder comunicarse porque uno cuando está dur durmi dormido, ¿no? Está, claro, puede tener experiencias de fuera del cuerpo y también está, como yo, a mí me gusta decir, un poco más vulnerable, por lo tanto, no estás tan con la mente en qué tienes que hacer mañana, en el trabajo, en, en los problemas y todo eso, ¿no? Exacto, así es, así es. Como es. una meditación sin meditar casi. Sí, 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 sí. pero existe esta, este, este, esta salida o este des, despegue. Despegue, sí, sí. Despegue de, de, de nuestra energía espiritual o de nuestra conciencia. Entonces eh, el cuerpo está ahí reposando, está dormido, eh, su, o los órganos físicos están ahí acostados, no, no hace nada, nosotros como espíritus tenemos una facilidad ma mayor de salir del cuerpo. Entonces, como estamos ahí en nuestro eh, cuerpo espiritual uh, uh, y, y tenemos un ser querido que ya no está en cuerpo físico más, pero que está en su cuerpo eh, también espiritual, estamos en la misma sintonía de vibración, por eso es que, es que lo vemos. Y nosotros lo tocamos, lo abrazamos tal cual, eh, eh, sólido, tan sólido como eh, eh, aquí en cuerpo físico, porque es la misma vibración de materia como está aquí, por eso la solidez. ¿Y eso le llamaríamos la dimensión o la frecuencia? ¿Sería una dimensión? ¿Qué llamamos eh, dimensión? Por ejemplo, son, eh, vamos a decir, eh, partes diferentes de un... Eh, de nivel de energía, ¿no? Sí, de nivel de energía, sí. Porque todo, es, ah, todo está vibrando en diferentes eh, sincronías, por ejemplo, como el, el, la luz, ah, otra roja que está aquí, otro sonido que está aquí. Todo en el mismo, aquí imagen que tenemos de imagen aquí todo funcionando junto, pero no se mezclan porque cada uno está vibrando en un padrón, padrón diferente. Entonces así con los cu cuerpos físicos y cuando estamos en el cuerpo perespiritual también tiene su solidez funcionando dentro de esta dimensión eh, que, que, que está sincronizada con, con la frecuencia del de cuerpo espiritual que estamos ahí manifestando nuestra conciencia en ese momento. That's interesting. He's saying that um, you know how we have different frequencies, of course, like the radio or TV, you know, or um, those sounds that only dogs hear, for example, and different frequencies and sounds. Um, in the spirit, he's saying it's the same thing. You know, um, you have different spirits in different dimensions, or I guess you would call it frequencies or uh, energy, you know, vibrations, and that they all exist, you know, in that one level. Because I guess everybody has, you know, even us in the physical world, world, um, everybody has. Uh, Um, I guess a job to fill, right? And uh, we don't interact with each other. Now, recently there's been a lot more interact, um, interactivity, I guess we could say, with the spirit world and humans than maybe we could all hope for. Because how many TV you know, shows have come out about people Uh, speaking to the death and making it a TV show or going out to a haunted place and talking to spirits? Do you think that's bad? I think that's great. Okay. Because this is one thing, what's happening is that we are having a better understanding of, uh, of what we truly are. Okay. So it's us. When we say uh, the spirits, we are spirits. We are. I, I, I say spirits because I, that's the term I feel comfortable with it. Uh, and, uh, but we have a lot of people, like scientists especially, and those who are too academic for, to use the, 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 the term spirit, they say consciousness. Right. So what, but what they mean by consciousness is the same thing that I mean by spirit. It is a non-physical essence that we are, not that we have, that we are, that can function independently from the physical body. So this uh, interest that you see having in, in here in the United States is amazing how many universities, yeah. uh, Duke universities, we have Stanford University, we have University of Arizona, Univers University of Virginia has done a tremendous job in, in studying reincarnation, children who remember, yeah. sp have spontaneous, th go there. for 50 yeah. years already. So uh -huh. what, what's happening is that it is this great, it's our evolution. And we see, you see a lot of kids now, three, four, five years old, with those great talents, mm -hmm. musical talents, scientific talents, all that. What is that? That's, you know, how can a three-year-old boy, that you see there, you know, playing of, of, uh, sonatas or playing or whatever. And they know that without so much practice. Yeah. In three years, a right year. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, those, that's, or even in, scientifically. So what is happening? 
what what's happening is that this is a knowledge that is already that's been acquired for many many lives that they have these special kids they tap into much early because of the work that they're here to do so they tap it and they manifest it uh, for us to see so there's this greater awareness of what, what the, who we truly are, that we are immortal spirits and that we are majestic, like I said before. Así que eh, hemos hablado de esto antes y me parece súper interesante el hecho de que hay, aquí en Estados Unidos pues hay muchos programas de televisión hoy en día que le están dando más importancia al tema de la energía eh, y personas que hablan con las personas que han fallecido, o sea, las energías, ¿no? Y en particular los niños, los niños de que a una edad muy temprana por ahí tienen un talento y dicen, pero hace creo que un mes vimos una historia de una niña acá en Miami que toca el piano y nunca ha tenido les, eh, lessons eh, práctica clases de piano y lo toca como si fuera Mozart o sea, y te pones a pensar y dices wow y él está explicando de que eso es porque el espíritu de la persona es como que eh, como que haga sí, ya tiene ya tiene este conocimiento ya está ahí claro. su experiencia ya es un músico y le viene antes o sea antes de ser adolescente en realidad no claro, o sea, porque lo que está pasando es que nosotros nosotros en nuestro eh, cuerpo espiritual nos, nosotros tenemos también un cuerpo mental por ejemplo, eh, la, la, los científicos dicen que las memorias lo que pasa es que producido por nuestro cerebro físico, por las neuronas, pero no es así, no es así. Okay. El, con nuestro conocimiento, nuestra, nuestra, nuestro, la fuente de nuestros pensamientos está en nuestro eh, eh, cuerpo espiritual y mental. Nosotros utilizamos el cerebro físico para manifestar nuestras ideas uh, uh, y pensamientos aquí en ese momento. Porque, por ejemplo, fuera del cuerpo, y yo he tenido muchas de estas experiencias, y también el, el libro ha, ha, habla mucho de eso, la persona que deja el cuerpo físico y se ve afuera del cuerpo físico, tiene ahí toda su capacidad cognitiva, toda su, su capacidad de pensar, de raciocinar, de memorizar, está fuera del cuerpo físico. Esta persona existe completamente con un cuerpo, con sus miembros, pies, manos, cabeza, nariz, todo, en un sistema energético distinto y separado del cuerpo sí. físico. Entonces, lo que la, 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 los, los niños, por ejemplo, sí. y, pero el cuerpo físico, cuando encarnamos aquí, cuando entramos en el cuerpo físico, eh, bloquea muchos de esta experiencia porque es un cuerpo nuevo. Es un aparatito pequeño que está empezando, ¿sí? Bien chiquitito. Tenemos el chiquito. Sí. Eh, entonces, no, no, no logramos traer todo el conocimiento, manifestar, no traer, porque ya tenemos, claro. manifestar con este aparatito limitado. Pero en ciertas ocasiones existe, sobre todo en este niño, que tiene un trabajo a hacer que es especial. Entonces, eso en una edad chiquitica, entonces, ello tiene acceso a este conocimiento que ya es suyo de mucho tiempo. Por eso es muy importante también para los padres, ¿no? Que sean, eh, que los apoyen en vez de darles, aquí en Estados Unidos les dan muchas pastillas a los niños para que, porque tienen ADD, por ejemplo, y en realidad no es eso, en realidad es que eh, tienen esa, esa mentalidad, esa ese conciencia que tú hablas y la quieren sacar y, lo, y los padres lo que están haciendo es como retraerlos y no dejarlos avanzar. Sí, eh, eh, eso, lo, eh, esos son, son niños, por ejemplo, son espíritus que vienen con, con cosas que hacer y ya viene con este conocimiento y muchos de ellos, es muy bonito eso. Cuando, por ejemplo, tiene problema, incluso de autismo, cuando se logra, por ejemplo, eh, eh, hacer la, la, una hipnosis en uno de estos sí. niños, por ejemplo, ellos muchas veces, ellos no quieren reencarnar, ellos no quieren, o, o vinieron forzados a la, a la reencarnación física, entonces como él no, no quiere, entonces eh, a veces se cierra, y los que tienen esta, la... la, la la, la agitación, todos esos es niños, eh, por ejemplo, ellos eh, eh, quieren hacer mucha cosa. Es un espíritu que ya tiene mucha cosa que hacer, mucha energía uh -huh. y tiene un cuerpo pequeño. Entonces, y tiene esta, a, 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 ¿cómo se dice? Ansiedad sí, sí. por hacer todo, pero entonces él, ellos quieren hacer, pero tiene sus limitaciones de entonces, tiempo, de conocimiento. ¿Tú crees que, que los chicos que tienen eh, autismo... Um, ¿Puede ser eso de que no querían venir? Esa es tu... Hay casos que sí, hay casos que sí, que no querían venir y hay casos que ellos, eh, puede ser, tenemos un... Entonces se puede tratar eso, claro, o sea, claro, es, es se mental, puede, se espiritualmente se puede tratar. Sí, claro, claro, y, y sobre todo de una manera 
a, a, a quizás con hipnosis o algo, ¿no? O con, con algún tipo de algún tipo regresión, sí, de, de terapia. Okay. Pero una terapia, por ejemplo, nos tenemos un caso maravilloso de un chico. Okay. Antes que me lo cuente, porque si no en inglés me voy a otro lado. <laughs> so we're talking a little bit about, um, you know, kids. He's saying that when we come to this world, um, usually there's kids that, you know, your your spirits, there's spirits that are very very anxious to come back and because they know they have a lot to do. But then there's other spirits that, and those are the kids that we see maybe and parents say, oh, you know, your kid has ADD and they give them like the pills to like calm them down or make them go to sleep. Like we were talking about yesterday in the other Jenny live, and. Um, That's just, that's wrong, you know, because you should really allow these kids to um, do what they want to do. No matter how much anxiety you see in them, it just means that they should do a lot of things. And then, uh, interesting enough, I've never heard of this, but um, I think it, it, it makes sense. People, uh, kids that have autism, you know, or, or different types of autism, he's saying that it might it, 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 that they are spirits that did not want to come back to the physical world, so they kind of. Retra retract themselves or uh, like rebel out I guess in a way of saying I don't want to go back I don't want to go back so when they come back you know they they don't want they don't have the capacity to do so much things because, right? they, because before incarnating they had a thing that they didn't want to come but we have other cases for instance this is beautiful his name his name is uh, Jacob Burnett and uh, he's 15 years old now and he was working on his PhD in physics and he loves light and he was in he was an autistic children mm -hmm. child and uh you see his video he's uh, he's fascinating he's fascinating and uh so he all for like three three years for the first three years of his life he was in that uh, cocoon that uh, that many autistic children uh do uh, mm -hmm. uh go into but jacob was amazing because then when he uh, uh um he became like more conscious that he because he talks he goes to university and, and like i said you know he teaches he's now at night when he was nine or ten he was teaching grown-ups physics so he was a way to, he got over it after yeah, a while yeah but the the time that he was on his own That because that was beautiful because uh, his mother uh, didn't take him to these places that did the regular yeah. uh, boring uh, trip. I feel like that re you know retracts him even more like right. because they feel like there's something wrong with them yeah 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 they will impose something on them it's not that so when his mother noticed it so she started to find out things that, that Jacob wanted they liked he liked lights he liked color and all that so when then when they talked to, ja to Jacob what did you do when you were in yourself Jacob was doing creating he was creating uh, 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 mathematics problems he was solving problems he was he was <laughs> he had all, he had planets he yeah. saw orbits of planets orbiting wow. each other he was trying to solve light problem more right. that he was like this was a scientist wow. a scientist probably one of one of the, the good ones that we had before yeah. <laughs> that was trying and light was his fascination and uh, so he, uh, he was there it so his little brain probably so busy with him doing all those uh, 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 things that he was doing with you know in another world uh, in, uh, really so he was in his own life but you know what are you hurting no 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 he was solving problems look at kids you know he when busier than we are <laughs> he was. and his mom his mom had um, a daycare in her garage And then Jacob would stay there, and then there was like a, they, uh, a lot of autistic children, they like small enclosed space. Okay. So Jacob had one, and uh, so he'd go there and he kept looking at the children. And then his mom asked him, what do you see the children? He said, I saw planets. The children, the, the children, they would spin around, <laughs> and then there was another one. He was making like <laughs> constellations. In, in, in I remember in, something, right? I, mean, of course. I don't know when he was out. He was doing, yeah, because this is what happened in, in, in my view. He had all this thing that he came here to work, mm -hmm. to, to do, and, uh, and it's phys physics, it's light, it's, that's his life. That's what he came here to do. But he was too early. The brain was not developed well enough for him to put all that. So he was enclosed by a while, you know, thinking, was, what is this poor kid doing? He was doing calculations that his, his professors and PhD <laughs> were doing. He, it, it was incredible. Wow. Bueno, la historia de un niño en particular de que tenía autismo que hoy en día dice que está no solamente pues estudiando para graduarse pero también enseñando a muchas personas eh, más jóvenes y que como todos los niños autismo, que tienen autismo eh, se, 
se, digamos, resguardan en, en un lugar muy pequeñito, pero dice que la madre de él en particular, dif, en diferencia a, toda la, a muchas otras madres que lo que hacen es o darles pastillas o mandarlos eh, a, a lugares donde en realidad mandan a las personas con problemas mentales, ¿no? O, eh, que yo no estoy de acuerdo con eso, ¿no? Por supuesto, pero eh, aparentemente él está explicando de que este niño en realidad era más inteligente de la cuenta, por lo tanto, cuando la madre en vez de sacarle las cosas o alejarlo, no, hasta la lo puso alrededor de niños, norma, de niños normales y le empezó a preguntar a ver qué era lo que él quería hacer y qué era lo que veía. Dice que el niño empezó a ver y a explicar de que él veía constelaciones, veía planetas, estaba resolviendo problemas matemáticos que ni siquiera los profesores de la universidad podían resolver. Entonces él dice de que cuando pasa eso, en realidad lo que hay que hacer con niños autistas es como reforzarles lo que ellos desean hacer, porque tienen tanto para hacer que dice de que el, el cerebro del, del físico, ¿no? de aquí del ser humano, no está desarrollado cuando nace para tanta información que ellos traen con ellos, ¿no? Exactly. Right? Sí, sí, you got it right, you got it right. You got Now, it right. here's, here's the, um, my intrigueness. You believe in reincarnation, of course. So um, I have this idea uh, where, and I, I don't know if, if you agree or not, that's why I'm asking you, but that sometimes people go through uh, bad or good things in life because of past lives. So for example, if in this life there's a murderer that killed 20,000, you know, 20 people, then when they die and they come back, um, this is normally the person that would have a problematic person in their life or would have problems in their life. You know, when we see people being beaten or go through really traumatic, you know, things where you say, oh my God, poor person. But then, um, I don't know, what do you think about that? Is that true or? Well, um, we, we are each, we are each one of us. We are in different stages of development, okay. consciousness. So, uh, fortunately, today, despite everything the bad that we see here on Earth, there is more good than bad. So that means that there are more uh, spirits, which which is us, mm -hmm. right? More spirits that are a little bit better developed than others, right? So you see these people doing good to society and doing good right. good to their own lives. At the same time, you see terrorists. You see you see groups of people uh, murdering whole villages in Africa, for instance. You you see a lot of re uh, re religious fundamentalists that do you know with terrorist attacks, for instance. So yeah. these are spirits. They're in the same path that we are in a growth, you know, growing, trying to grow, trying to evolve. But they're in a stage of development. They they, uh, they actually they have not. Uh, uh, mastered for, uh, right and wrong, what you should do and you should not do. But they're they're, they're evolving. Just they suffer just like anybody else, but they they're not aware of that. So and uh, they're they're going to suffer because our consciousness is our uh, uh, worst enemy, right? <laughs> so when we say that we you die, you do bad things, you go to you you die and then you go to the next world, then you're going to be judged by God or by who? You're not. We're going to be judged by our own consciousness, yeah. and we are punished by the things that we do. Right. So that's because we we have that, and and the more de uh, developed we are, uh, uh, conscientiously and spiritually, the more things that we do wrong punishes us. Because we, we call that karma, or well, karma. Well, karma. What they call karma is like a, uh, a wheel, right? So uh, now right. karma is uh, something energy that you have. Uh, uh, like cause and effect. Right. So that could be good karma or bad karma. Yeah. Actually, I call it uh, consequences, right? Consequences yeah. of what we do. Yeah. I, I think that'll be a lot more simpler for people that, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and people ask, ask me, like, how do I know if I'm going to be happier in my next life? Right. And it, that's a very, that's a, it's a <laughs> drink the venom and you'll find out. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very easy to, okay, to answer. Why? How are you going to? Uh, how are you living your life now? Because we always reap the the consequences of our actions, right. the way we think, the way we act, and if it's positive or negative. If you're a person who hates most, okay. right? If you're a person who is vengeful, if you want to harm someone, all that, and you can do all that, but the chances that you're going to be suffering a lot physical diseases eventually because our thoughts and emotions affect our human body that's that's scientifically proved 
then your health is going to be poor and your consciousness because then when you die and I've, I spoke with I love this guy <laughs> <laughs> I spoke with a lot of dying people right one of them was my grandfather you know when they're 70 80 and they're about to die mm -hmm. they look at you and, and they say if I could have done everything different you know you know forgiveness asking forgiveness uh, my grandpa was one of them you know per, you know perdona me por lo que yo hice it, it, we're going to get to that point but we don't want to do that anymore. We so we want to do everything correctly, and we or can do it early. You know, early. not when you're dying. No, no, our forgiveness, our love. We need to do whatever you know now because we don't know what's going to happen. So we already know what's good and get and, and it's bad for us. And so what we need to do is to act upon it. Like uh, uh, um, if you're suffering, I don't understand why I suffer so much. Yeah, that's but you suffer. So, we suffer so much because we caused a lot of hurt yeah. back then. Either in this life, yeah, that's, that's you know, you, you, so you don't blame God, we don't blame God and we, we don't blame the devil because if we do, we say, uh, oh, the devil did this to me. No, 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 we did it. Now we're reaping what we did, the consequences. So just so you know, this is the first time I've met him and every, every, when we talked about this, you say, you're saying exactly what I've always said. So it's great to have a professional actually, you know, um, concur everything that we've always said and it feels really good because, um, you know, we, we do understand a lot about energy, but I always tell you guys, you, you can't take one opinion, you know, you have to take uh, many opinions and then see which one you feel more comfortable with, of course. Bueno, eh, hablando un poquito ¿no? De, del tema, eh, yo le estaba preguntando a las personas que hoy en día, que hemos hablado mucho de esto en Jenny Live, eh, pasan por alguna situación quizás trágica o alguna enfermedad o algún, uh, tienen alguna persona problemática en la vida de ellos eh, y uno dice, ay, pobre persona, ¿no? Entonces yo le preguntaba, eh, eso en realidad tú no crees que también puede ser por vidas pasadas para los que eh, quieren creer en la reencarnación, ¿no? Eh, de las consecuencias que, que hayan hecho en otra vida. Por ejemplo, si tú matas a 20 personas en una vida y después mueres y vuelves a reencarnar, no crees que te va a ir todo bonito en la próxima vida. O sea, probablemente vas a tener, como le explicaba, es una consecuencia, ¿no? De las energías que has creado, donde vas a tener muchos problemas físicos, enfermedades o eh, problemas en general, ¿no? Así que yo le decía que interesante, eh, pues afirmar esto, ¿no? Que nosotros siempre hemos hablado y, y nada, me, me encanta, a mí me encanta hablar de estos temas, me fascinan los temas de las energías y creo de que sí, que cada vez la gente se está abriendo más ante esto. Eh, bueno, hablando, volviendo al tema de, del Out of Body Experience, que de eso más que todo se trata tu libro. Eh, Sé que también hay un riesgo en que algunas personas, eh, hasta me han preguntado a mí algunos miembros y dicen, yo quiero intentarlo, ¿cómo lo hago? Y yo siempre les digo, nunca lo hagan solos, si es la primera vez siempre tienen que tener a alguien que los guíe, o como una regresión, por ejemplo, ¿no? Porque puede haber una, des una desconexión del cuerpo y el espíritu y puede ser que te quedes afuera, ¿no? Um, ¿Cuál sería tu opinión para las personas que dicen, yo quiero intentarlo por y no entienden mucho? Bueno... Eh, yo tengo en mi website en mi, mi otro librito puedes dar tu llama, website si quieres yeah, admirserrano.com admirserrano.com and uh, the other the booklet the manual that I wrote is called out, out and about how to have conscious out of body experience so you That's, teach them yeah, oh. yeah because we <laughs> él les enseña cómo hacerlo see, because this is not we all we as a spirit free spirit in more ways than one We don't like to just stay in a physical body. We leave it. So many of our dreams at night are experiences that we have. Like people are in a say, yeah, uh, you, you need to die, you're going to die, and you're going to the afterlife. We already experienced the afterlife. Yeah. Many of our dreams are visits to the place that we're going to go after we die. So we are, we are very familiar with it. And those are the kind of dreams that you say, it felt like I lived it, right? right yeah, <laughs> it's so real to be a dream. It, it was real because it wasn't a dream. You taste it, you feel it, and you remember it as, as if you'd done it already. Exactly. So we do all that. So my booklet, uh, or my manual, what, what, what I teach, what I show is how to use, how to become conscious during a dream, how to know that you're dreaming, and from your dream, how to leave the physical body and experience life in that, uh, in, the, in the physical, in the non-physical realm. What would be the first step? Well, the first step, uh, there, there's like a series of steps. The first one is a relaxation. Okay. That's the first one, because you need to relax. Like a uh, near-death experience is a forced out-of-body experience. The, the body suffers a trauma, uh, be a cardiac arrest or, or an accident or whatever. And then all the organs then stop functioning for a, for a time. So the spirit 
which is the person mm -hmm. gets out just like that or is evict evicted I don't here <laughs> is it evicted know, yeah. Yeah. and it gets out okay. it then sees all that but the person is going to come back why mm -hmm. because the job is not done don't take we, too long though yeah <laughs> we only we only leave the only danger no it's not danger the only time that we're going to leave the physical body and not return is when we finish our work here and yeah. that, and that, uh, that it could be some people you know some children die or the you know when they're 30 40 or 50 or 100 so when we finish our term then we have the final out of body experience the one with no return to that physical body because we're going to have others when we reincarnate into another body so there's no danger there actually i feel like a lot of kids when they die um young it's because probably they had to teach um that family something right so it's like that was their goal that's one of the things or like to to complete uh, um, uh, or work or, or cycle or a mission that they had for some reason or bring b join two people together join a couple right yeah or, or give a meaning to them because it's it's amazing how we, we're, we're smart yeah. we, even even when we're not in the physical body we there's know a lot of things that you we just don't bother to think about you know That's right yeah yeah there's all like on the other side and we're part of it we did that before we came here right. We, we, we sit around and we see what we need to work and we put places and we, we, you negotiate like when <laughs> you even with your your your, your father your before they I heard about that yeah. yeah you said that so Is you go, go in that family you go that first, <laughs> yeah you go first and then I'll go and then when you ask a lot of kids who uh, uh, said why did you choose your parents and uh, the, who remember past life right because I know that they would be good to me okay see this and this is something that's very important especially to parents so children choose us as as parents like my daughters chose me and and uh, my ex-wife so they chose us now i need to honor that very much why because they put all the trust in me they're there sitting there with this evolved spirits and they say i want to be i want to add me to be my father because i know that uh, he's going to be good to me and they and have two daughters okay. so they're the ones that that do me like a como se dice un muñeco they like do a doll it. like a rag doll yeah yeah that's <laughs> do with you whatever you want yeah. <laughs> so I spoil them you know <laughs> bread but that's but I try to do a good education and I do and I love to do that why because I know that they chose me so I must honor that dice de que nosotros antes de venir a esta tierra también escogemos eh, la familia que queremos yo he escuchado de esto eh, y es interesante no porque uno dice uno también pues entendiendo más en el tema espiritual <coughs> cuando entiendes de que hay una vida más allá pues te pones a pensar y dices bueno qué no he aprendido en una vida pasada que tengo que aprender en esta vida que me pueda me puede enseñar este otro espíritu entonces parece de que antes de venir todos planean no bueno primero vas tú después vas tú y tú ya escoges quién va a ser tu papá quién va a ser tu mamá por qué y qué es lo que tienes que aprender pero bueno eh, y luego también estaba contando de que en su página web pueden eh, tener los datos para ustedes que me han preguntado Jenny ok cómo se cómo podemos intentar tener la experiencia fuera del cuerpo <risa> que, que ni siquiera ni siquiera lo, lo han intentado no pero hacer una regresión entonces yo siempre digo bueno no lo intenten hacer solos porque van a tener un problema y no es algo para jugar no tampoco pero él está diciendo de que los sueños para muchos de ustedes que tienen sueños y dicen cómo podemos descifrar los sueños él lo acaba de corroborar los sueños que nosotros después nos, de, nos despertamos y decimos eso se sintió de verdad, eso realmente como que sentí el olor, el sabor lo que tocaba y lo sentí como que era de verdad, él dice de que nosotros en realidad cuando dormimos como nuestro espíritu, es la esencia de todo y venimos de, otro la, de, de otras dimensiones que es muy normal que nuestro, nuestro espíritu no se quiera quedar aquí, entonces cuando dormimos como, si estamos, como estamos en un plano más de descanso, no, tenemos experiencias fuera del cuerpo, en otras dimensiones en otras vidas, digamos, en energéticas, ¿no? Eh, y esta, y en muchos de los sueños son, es como una vida paralela, lo que le podríamos llamar, ¿no? Como... Es, es, es nosotros, nosotros vivi viviendo temporalmente en 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 the afterlife. Yeah. Y, y después nosotros estamos acostumbrados, nos, nosotros somos veteranos, we are we are we are old time <laughs> we are old timers in this dying business because first we've died many many times and second our own dreams, you know, and then you die and, and then we see I had experience uh out of body experience that I was watching, I was trying to help like this young kid who had died in like the night before. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, my in in my job and he was in this place it was like a, a town like a replica of uh, and he was looking for it, it was like dawn and he uh, saw that he was very bewildered looking at that place and i said what you looking for he said um the building there my where my company is and so he said it we I think it was in that corner, and I see that building, but I don't see. It. And he wanted to go to work, and okay. I asked him, "What What do you do?" He said, "I work in the finance department of this company." And I said, "Where are you from?" And then we are. I'm out of body, in the spirit body. And he said, "I'm from Uberlandia. It was a city in Minas Gerais, in Brazil." And then I knew it because they had told me, like my the, the, the people who are working it, they told me, "Go, you know, this guy just." And he even had the bandage. He had had a, a brain surgery. And he died during the procedure, and he even had the bandage around his head. So in that case, uh, what we would call that pretty much is people that die all of a sudden, and they don't really realize that they're dead. You know, they want to continue to live in here. They don't know, because they're like, they, they think they're dreaming. So yeah. my job, I was out on my body, and they, that's one of the work that I do mm -hmm. in the spirit world. Then it's very I, nice. Yeah, then I told them, well, don't worry about that anymore. You don't have to work anymore. <laughs> and I said, don't worry about that anymore. No, come, come, come with us. I'm gonna show, show you something. Yeah. And then these guys came, and they, they told them. Uh, they, then, but then my job started, right. stopped. So, so my, because um, when we are out of the body, we have like a, a higher energy that the, 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 the newly deceased can see us fa better right. than the other ones who were already there. So my job was just to, to tell them that things had changed a little bit. It was not too different. Yeah, it was not too. You don't have a body anymore. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> I had one experience. That this was more beautiful. And I una de las experiencias que él dice una de las cosas hace cuando uno tiene una experiencia fuera del cuerpo es ayudar a, a los a las personas que recién fallecen que por ahí no se dan cuenta. Entonces por ahí tienes una persona que acaba de salir de uno de un hospital porque tenía cirugía en el cerebro y fallece. Entonces cuando tú te sales del cuerpo en realidad pues tu espíritu viaja y muchos muchas personas tienen eh, dones o tienen ese trabajo de ayudar a esos espíritus. Entonces nos contaba una historia en particular de un muchacho en Brasil que estaba hasta con, con con la con la so, no la soga sería con how do you say bandages con las curitas no sé <ríe> la, la, las curitas de después de la cirugía y que él le, 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 le tuvo que contar de que no se preocupe de que de que él ya no tenía que trabajar porque no entendía él dice estoy buscando mi edificio para ir a trabajar pero bueno eh, se nos acabó el tiempo por hoy vamos a tener otro programa porque mira que hemos hablado de las cosas muy rápidamente para que vean ¿eh? pero eh, creo de que da muchísimo más para hablar eh, creo que especialmente para Miami TV Life mucha gente se va a sentir más confortada en estos temas no hoy en día tocamos un poquito de cada cosa Quizás en otros programas podremos enfocarnos en un tema, extenderlo más y así sucesivamente. De todos modos, quiero que le digas a las personas tu website y si quieren tener charlas, por supuesto, aquí en Miami, adelante. Sí, uh, my website is admirserrano.com. It's my name and last name, first name and last name, A D M I R S E R R A N O.com. Okay. And uh, so you can contact me. And uh, the final message is for everybody who lost a loved one or may be suffering because, you know, someone departed. The only thing that happened was that they, they are out of sight, but not out of their lives. They continue living as we, every one of us, will continue living when we finish this work here, which is beautiful. And we need to be very happy with who we are. We value ourselves because we are majestic beings and we can do a lot of good things here. And that's what we should aim, doing good things. There you go. And of course, remember, consequences. So make sure you live a positive life. That's all I got to say. All right, guys, we're wrapping it up. Uh, don't forget, we'll be with you. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. My pleasure. We'll, be we'll be with you again at 5 um, with another special guest. So don't forget, stay tuned here in Miami TV. And it was a great show. You know, I got to say that we did good with the English and Spanish, but we're definitely going to have him back because a lot of you guys always have questions about this. Um, and uh, I think it pretty much also answered a lot of questions that you guys always have that I've answered. And And he pretty much put the the you know the final touch to it because it's great to hear from a professional and uh, it, it's great to hear from a professional that also has the same idea idea that we've been giving you the whole the whole time so hope you guys enjoyed it uh, have a good day or night wherever you are in the world and uh, we'll see you later big kiss ciao ciao nos vemos en la próxima adios